Hey, welcome to the award-winning 99% Radio Network here in the Fishbowl, broadcasting you live from Fishbowl Studios here in Bedford, Texas. We are proud partners with the High Seas Rally, man, set and sail on October 26th to November 4th. Go to the High Seas Rally dot com and book your room today use code number 99 and you will get 250 dollars in shipboard credit man the entertainment the excursions everything is top notch and once you book your trip you are automatically entered to win one of four custom made motorcycles by some of the top builders in the country man get over to highseasrally.com and book your excursion today and what i just saw is that you don't have to pay for the whole thing now. Mm -hmm. They have a, a system through Uplift, and you have 24 months to pay for this. And they make all the uh, payments very affordable for you. Mm -hmm. So check them out. And uh, there is no reason you shouldn't be on there for 24. Uh, you got 24 months. And then just default on it, and then just go next year. That's all. That's <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what everybody else does? Just, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Everybody doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want to welcome my co-host, uh, 12 and Pitbull. What's going on? What's Hi, up? brother. Another great day. Man, it has been one hell of a month, right? Yeah. yeah. It's been crazy. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about the MMIW ride, which was probably one of, and uh, 12, you can correct me on this, was one of the most powerful things that we've ever done. Ever. Uh, I've never been so emotional at an event and so enlightened and educated by uh, what we seen, who we spoke to, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. But I want to thank... Uh, a huge shout out to Gabriel Joseph of the Recovery Ranger Corps, Motovision Matt Norcus, uh, Nokus. I always put an R in there, and I didn't screw it up. Uh, Paul Gregory from Spokes to Hope, man, uh, came out there on a Paul Yaffe bike, and um, we found out that it's governed at 115 because the leader of the pack. You, did you hear about this whole I did. thing? She I she did. is a maniac on those <laughs> roads. Holy crap, Couldn't man! Lorenda, Lorenda, man, Warren. she is She's a badass a bad woman biker. She we uh, invited her to lead us from uh, Ship Rock. Mm -hmm. uh, we rode up to Four Corners and then oh, oh pull you pull the mic closer all the way over from uh, Four Corners to. Uh, Tuba City, and she led that whole way, and then the whole next day. Great rider, and her bike hauls ass. It goes at least 125 mile an hour. Yeah, yeah well, she <laughs> smoked Paul Gregory, but his was his. He found out his was limited. So. Yeah, he got to 115, and he started bogging down a little bit. But, but it was uh, like there was 15 miles of nothing but straightaway, no cars, awesome. no nothing, and you could just, you know, I was thinking of uh, Bruce Springsteen and uh, Cadillac, you know, open up. Yeah, yeah. Hear them engines roar. I, and the scenery was beautiful. I want to... Uh, but Tearing Paul, up the highway like a big old dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to sing? Or are you I could. Gonna, you, I know that song. We, I, know yeah. I know you do. I know you're showing your age. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank Paul Gregory with Spokes for Hope, man. He was a great addition with all the people he brought. Um, Lorinda Warren, who really was an amazing host uh, for us with her and uh, Muzzy. Um, and our escorts, man, uh, from the, the Danae Riders, um, Greg and Billy, man. Awesome uh, job. Yep. Awesome, we, we awesome so job. We so appreciate you running Blocker for us and uh, really taking good care of us throughout the whole thing because there were, you know, um, some little, couple of little hiccups and uh, they made sure it ran smooth, which was, which was wonderful. So this was the, the inaugural ride. Next year it's going to be even bigger and better. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to plan for 2025. Stay tuned to the 99 for details on that as we move forward to help out the MMIW. You know, we were reading today, uh, I don't know if you want to just chime in or if you want to keep playing cru Candy Crush. No, I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, we're a little bit behind, so I'm, I'm running no, behind. I'm working I'm over here. I'm, I'm working, I'm working. I'm screwing oh. you. Be well, before we get into the, uh, the ride, because that's going to be, um, that's something we really want to take some time to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, Pippa, why don't we talk about the Ochos and how mm. much work you've been putting behind this, man. You've been running like a, a mad <laughs> well, woman making, gone, I've been running God, you've like been crazy. juggling. So tell us a little bit about what's going to go well, obviously on. Obviously, we had to change the venue uh, due to space and some other things. Um, but we got them at knockouts, and we got that place locked down from uh, 12 to 5. Vendors are going to be set up at noon. Um, awards are at 2. We have it till 5. <clears throat> and if you want to stay afterwards, they're going to have the UFC fight as well. Right. Um, we got a bunch of vendors. It's turning out. We got some security as well. Right. Because, um, you know, I think it's important to have everybody be safe, you know. Of course. Of and course. Yeah. And then, then uh, Knockouts has really jumped on board on the Ochos. Yes. They've 
really um, been so uh, welcoming for us that they're offering bottle service. They got bottle service. They have brunch. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Well, they have like bottle a, that's earlier in the day. But yes, they have bottle service. They have they have a sports simulator thing where you can either kick the ball or do golf, and it's like you're. I don't know what you call it. Not virtual, but that was such a girl move. Uh, <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Freaking Happy Gilmore over there. I can hit <laughs> the ball like Happy Gilmore though. It's better than I can any other way. Um, they sell cigars there. They're gonna have drink specials, food specials. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a good turnout, and the space is huge. Yeah, and I and I heard some uh, some clubs are already booking hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah. which is amazing. Rented think. houses, uh, yeah. eternal few. Spring in, uh, I think, 23, they said, and they rented a, you know, what is it, a Furbo, not Furbo, a B &B Verbo, I don't know what it is. They a rented B a house. A B&B. &B. A B&B, &B. &B. there you go. <laughs> How'd you get Furbo out of B&B? I don't, B &B? I don't, I don't, that of wine I don't keep up on those things, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, speaking about the bottle of wine, uh, 12 and V uh, purchased, um, I guess they were in their alcohol stage, and they per purchased a... <laughs> A yeah. great wine called Sideshow. So uh, I'm going to put that right up on my, on my uh, crown bar. Um, and uh, that's just, uh, it's not my brand, but it's, uh, it is pretty cool that it says Sideshow. But um, the Ochos are this Saturday. Uh, it's right here in Fort Worth. You, we're going to have a blast. Good time. Come on down. We've got a lot of nominations. Um, the winners uh, will, are already chosen. The trophies are made, and we're ready to go. Um, actually, let's let's just recap a little bit on the nominations. Um, Ange, can you play that nomination? It's the uh, the Ocho uh, video. We're gonna just show you a quick nomination video, um, so you can refresh your mind right after I'll this. Refresh your mind. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Who's Record Team? And I am standing right next to Miles and Big News Big News. Wait. back to the award-winning 99% Radio Network. Man, that was the nominations and, at the end, yes. some of the winners of uh, that we have already announced for the Ochos. So, man, just come on out. It's going to be fun. Support, network, uh, be part of something bigger than yourself. Think about the things that you can accomplish. Think of it as a big club meeting and just hanging out, mm -hmm. enjoying your brothers and sisters, having some uh, good drinks and food and in an amazing too. place. And there's hookahs. There's hookahs there. Yeah, well, it's on 420. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I mean, they're not I've like never fun been hookahs, like, but like they're, they're not fun hooker? <laughs> not hookers? Hookers. Hook, hookers. Hookers. <laughs> All right. It'd be yeah. better if we had hookers. No, it would not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know I, when you get you know, home, that kind of really you know when you get home, Taylor's gonna kill you, right? That kind of really ruined my whole segue to say, 
this show is all about the ladies. I didn't want to. I don't want to say hookers and ladies in the hookah. same thing. Hookah. 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 Oy vey. Oy vey. Oh man. So uh, let's jump right into um, the the MMLIW ride. Uh, and Angie, if you could just bring up that other video, it's just a little quick recap of um, our ride this weekend. So, uh, man, tell us what you think. Just a recap of uh, the ride, a small uh, portion of the ride that uh, we did this weekend. Twelve, I'm going to let you take this away because this was your baby, this was your ball, man. Uh, tell us, tell us all about it. So, some months back, um, pretty close to a year ago now, we started talking about going out to Navajo Nation and trying to do what we could do uh, as a show to lend our voice to that cause, and. After a couple trips out there and a participation in an, an MMIW walk, uh, a small one from uh, Window Rock down towards uh, Gallup, we came up with the idea of a ride. And we discussed riding around the four corners of the Navajo Nation. And the Navajo Nation is a state the size of um, West Virginia. It's pretty big. And so we put it together. We started slowly bringing uh, folks in uh, like Paul Gregory, um, and others that had an interest. And so, to be honest with you, we, w we were going to be happy if we had 10 people go on this first ride. We didn't know what to expect. Um, we didn't have, um, and we were on a very steep learning curve about what we knew and what we didn't know and who was out there and, and the whole thing. But that said, we were determined to go. So last weekend, uh, Thursday, some of us let out um, and uh, made our way to um, Window Rock, Arizona. You came uh, the next day. And uh, so we started out Friday morning bright and early at the uh, Code Talkers Monument where it was just a, a just beautiful background. This is a place that has been used for centuries, uh, eons, by uh, Native Americans. At one point it had a, uh, a, a nice spring in it before the U.S. Cavalry killed it. And uh, Native Americans would come from around uh, the whole area to do a powwow cookout, renew relationships and things like that. More about that thought um, in, a, in a minute. But we went there, we, uh, we had a traditional blessing. I think when we left out um, of Window Rock, there was like 17 of us. Uh, ultimately, we got up to about 45. Uh, and frankly, it was yeah. hard to count because- People kept joining They kept coming the in and along the route. And one, when we made that one gas stop there, uh, along I-40, I looked back and it was like there was looked like there was 45 or 50 bikes, I, and I didn't even know where they had jumped in at. But yeah. uh, we just kept picking them up, and people would go in and out. So we had the traditional blessing, and then uh, we left Window Rock to head towards uh, Ship Rock, and we rode up over uh, about 10,000 feet elevation mountain, which was beautiful, big sweeping curves. Mm -hmm snowpack streams alongside the uh, road i mean we saw pronghorn uh antelope you know deer it was just wow. amazing scenery and the ride you couldn't beat it then we rode down to the desert floor and took off on one of those legendary straightaways which was awesome and all of a sudden you go from the alpine down to the desert and you're seeing these huge rock structures that are just beautiful in their own way with the sunlight, you know, hitting, and I'm, I'm not doing them justice, um, you know, with their, with the description of them, mm -hmm. because you have to see the it formation is to, awesome. to believe yes. it. Um, and then we got to the first stop there at, at Ship Rock in New Mexico. And it was an interesting deal, but uh, a local church uh, that is right in the middle of the MMIW battle, okay, because Ship Rock is a hub 
of uh, human trafficking for uh, the, the uh, native women. And it's also a hub for fentanyl. Mm -hmm. um, you got those two dynamics there, so there's a lot of stuff that goes on there. And they had pulled out all the stops for us. They had displays with the faces of missing uh, uh, indigenous women, men and women. And uh, they brought food and they had an honor guard and um, Native American women dressed in traditional uh, Native American clothing and, and uh, they invited us to speak. So we got a chance to say, and that was really the first chance we got to say, look, we, we soon realized that we had made some mistakes. We didn't know what we, what we didn't know. But we, I think we convinced them by our effort. We got educated quick. We, we got educated very, very quick. And I think we, uh, we convinced them that, you know, our, our motivations were pure. Everybody, everybody that went from DFW out there did so on their own dime, came out of pocket. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any sponsors. We, we wanted to have. Next year might be different. But uh, everyone was dedicated enough to we're going to do this and whatever the cost. And it cost at least five, I'm guess, just guessing, about $500 for each person uh, to go, so, which is pretty fair because – Couple. Well, I spent about I spent about two hundred in fuel. Yeah, so three hundred bucks plus for the hotel back. rooms like and uh, huh? yeah, plus yeah. A, a twelve hour run out there on a, on a bike. I mean, the hotels were pretty cheap. I mean, yeah. I mean, the hotels were a hundred dollars a night. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, but still about five right around five hundred right? plus right. food or whatever and whatever you bought. Well, after we got a chance to talk, then we got a chance to hear um, some of the stories of these ladies, what they had endured, what the families had endured, and. The main thing that I heard through all that is we, we have we only have a voice. We have advocates. They, there's advocates out there, but they only have a voice inside the the four corners, right? It's hard for them to to step out. And when you hear the things that some of these folks have been through, you're going, how the hell in the United States of America in 2024 does this shit go on, right? Right. And why not? But we we as as former law enforcement, we had an idea because we've been out there before, why the law enforcement responses are so poor. And there are excuses, there's geography, there's all kinds of uh, lack of personnel, lack of training. There's a lot of things that go on that um, impact all of that. And that's not to throw a blanket indictment on them, but those are variables that are play, at play. So we finished up there at, uh, at Shiprock, and that's where we met uh, Lorinda and uh, learned how badass she says if you guys want to go for a good ride i'll take you some places you you're not going to see normally and off we went and uh we just saw we didn't go to monument valley that'll be where forrest gump did his run that'll be next year's uh run but i'll tell you what she she can ride and it was it was awesome and we took a little detour to four corners uh new mexico went there for uh, a little while and then uh we ran uh, I think about 200 miles, maybe a little bit longer from Four Corners all the way back to Tuba City. And again, you're seeing some of the most amazing landscape that God himself created. It was just wonderful, beautiful. That's uh, when me and Tigger were calling for help through the desert. We were like, yeah, that's <laughs> when you were. Because we, 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 were, we, were, we, like, we were meeting him in Tuba City, and we were cutting through the, uh, the desert, uh, through the, the nation. And because um, we were supposed to stay on 40 the whole ride, and we got turned around, we got we got off back, and all of a sudden we, I'm like, oh, I know this, I know this road, like I know this road, because <laughs> well, we, we were there, I was like, it looked familiar, so we start going through there, and now we're we're in a desert, and we're, we're just going, and we're losing our GPS signal, we're losing everything, and you know, tire stickers going. Remember that movie Breakdown? Remember that movie <laughs> Breakdown? I'm like, shut up, we, <laughs> you know, and uh, we're, we're going on, uh, even going through the reservation. The, the the turns and going up, we were about There's no fel cell phone service. Yeah, and we were about 7,000. I know you guys weren't replying to my text messages. So that's, <laughs> well, that's because so <laughs> I was not allowed to take two hands off the wheel. We were, we were about 7,000 feet in elevation, and we're going around the mountain, and there is no guardrail. And it, oh. it looks like a bad YouTube video where you're going to go off the cliff because <laughs> and Tara's sitting next to me. She's almost jumping in my seat. She's like, move over, move over, move over, because you, as you get closer – and you just see these straight down cliffs going, and yeah. she's like, "We're gonna go, we're gonna die." She's like, "We're gonna die. No one's gonna find us. No one's even gonna know we're out here." I'm telling him when we finally got cell service. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm on 191. There is no 191. I didn't know what the hell <laughs> we were. You, you, you notice, didn't even know what road we were on. You notice she came back with no hair. <laughs> yeah, right? the yeah, aliens yeah. took it. 
the, the, the they shaved them while they it. were doing their their <laughs> examination. But just just so you know, out there, cell phone service is very sketchy, mm-hmm. and it's a different country. Yeah. Okay, that's a sovereign, sovereign nation. nation. So they have their own setup. Many people, and we saw many many examples of it, still living with dirt floors, no interior plumbing, no water. I mean, not just toilets, but water, yeah. right? You have to rely on outside source. Heat is done by wood. Um, it, it, you just cannot imagine this. And then when you start looking into it, you, you learn all the factors. You begin to mm-hmm. see all the different um, influences that are, are going on out there at just that reservation just that reservation. Um, and I, I, I did forget to say that, that it was at Shiprock that we met Muzzy, right. who is a very um, dedicated MMIW advocate. And she took us to school, frankly. She, uh, her and Lorinda both. And we, we hold no ill will about that. We appreciate that, that you guys have embraced us the way you did. You, you taught us things we need to know. We got lots more to learn. But yeah. um, we're, on that, we're on the right path now, I believe. But, you know, looking at the, the landscape and the the law enforcement presence that's there makes the nation, makes the Navajo Nation a prime stomping ground for criminal activity. And people take advantage of that. So we, you do have um, the cartels and you do have the criminal element that know that the chance of being caught or the chance of being, you know, going under the radar it is um, it's so easy, and the women and the children in there, you know, when we spoke to Motivision Matt, I was off base on, I thought there was about a million people in, you know, uh, missing and, and held in, in sex and uh, human trafficking, and Motivision Matt, who has traveled all over the world, schooled me on that and said there's over 50 million, to this day, 50 million enslaved women and children mm. 80% into the sex trafficking trade and 20% in labor trade. So once these w- women and children are snatched, they are, they are just taken off the nation. Nobody's looking for them. No, I mean, we, we read this New York Times post yeah. um, where the, the, outside even, the outside law enforcement, because of the way they live, because some uh, have addiction problems or they're homeless, they don't get the, the, the notoriety that they should. You know, they don't have that voice because people go, oh, no, she's an outbook or she's, she, you know, she's this or, or that or the other thing. And they, they don't take it serious. And, you know, we heard those stories that we three did. years later, a body is found in the desert. Yep. Um, six years later, a body is found in the desert. And, you know, that's that's pain that no family should endure. I don't care about addictions. I don't care about your, your social status. No family should go through that pain. Yeah. And it was heartbreaking to hear uh, some of these stories. So at each stop that we made along the way, we, we talked to either survivors of MMIW or family members, and we heard, you know, I don't want to say it's the same basic thing because each situation is, is really different, but um, all these factors are present in all of them. So we rode to uh, Tuba City, spent the night in Tuba City. Next day, uh, we were up and at them early, met with some more victims at a local Denny's, and then hit the road, rode back up over the mountains uh, into Flagstaff, where we rode into downtown Flagstaff. And Can I stop for one second? Yeah. We stopped at that gas station. And this yeah. was, this yeah. screwed everybody up. Just, just, I just thought it was comical. We stop at a gas station, right, and we're like, all right, what time are we meeting? It's 8 o'clock, right? Say it was 8 o'clock, right? So it's 8 o'clock on everybody's watch at, at the, the gas station. Now, right across the street at the Denny's, it's a freaking different time zone. It was 7 <laughs> o'clock in the morning across the street. So we're like, all right, so which side of the street are we And we're still on, on Texas time. <laughs> I'm like, we went through four freaking different time zones, yeah. nice. or three different time zones, and nobody could get on the right page. So that, for next yeah. year, we got to remember we, the time We zones. will remember that. But, <laughs> so we, we met with um, all these folks, and we started building our, our database of, of knowledge. And uh, people were coming in and out. We were making connections, talking to uh, the folks. Got to give a big shout out to the Diné riders uh, and some of the folks from the Navajo Hopi riders that joined us. But uh, uh, the guys from Diné riders, 
were fantastic. Running that blocked for us, ran they they covered for us, protected, watched over us. Quite frankly, correct. Um, and and we uh, we we bonded with those guys um, on a on a huge scale. And so and then we ultimately we made our way back to um, Gallup, where uh, we ended the ride at the police department, and uh, we met uh, a lady who came forward and she she shared her story with us. And she had been taken uh, into the sex traffic. And she said, you know, I still live here. And she told the story of how as she drives down Highway 66, you know, everyone, you know, drive Route 66 and whatnot. She says, every one of those motels that you drive past, I've been in, sold um, for my body. And she told her story about how she ended up getting out of that uh, but remember thank, they put the price tag on. Yeah, she, she was she, worth seven, and this is after um, a couple of years being held or months, right? Uh, being held against her will and and being sold, who knows how many times. She heard. She, I mean, they treated her like a commodity, commodity. like a product. Yeah. She's worth seventy thousand right? dollars. She was worth seventy thousand dollars. They were selling her to another uh, client to 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 be farmed out, you know. And they were like, all right, this girl, because after she she even said she was gang raped multiple times. And they said, okay, since this this is the type of woman she is, now we could sell her for seventy thousand because we know this product or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's 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 unfathomable that there are people out there that have no soul mm-hmm. that will do that to another human being. Yeah. And uh, when she said that, that the, can it you was imagine having a price tag on you? Matt? I mean, it, it's horrible. I can't imagine. And. People ask the question, well, why didn't you try to escape? Why didn't you leave? And she was beaten regularly. Um, her family and children, um, she had children from a previous relationship. Uh, and she was groomed, by the way. I left that yeah. out. She was groomed for this uh, person that she trusted, uh, began to trust and who fooled her into trusting him. Uh, he was really a, a, a dirt bag at the, at the end of the day. And uh, he... Uh, threatened her family, threatened to kill uh, her family and her children, uh, and then went to their house one day and showed up when she came to try to have something with them. And that was the, the threat was there, like, oh my God, he knows where they live, mm. and they're in the house right now, and he's just smiling, looking at me, going, "Huh? You try to run? I'm this is your last him. chance. This, this is, is your this, last chance." This. And if it were not for a resolute female police officer out there who wouldn't take no, who did push things, okay, she would have been sold and out of the country uh, and probably to ultimately be disposed of. But uh, she got beat up really bad uh, for trying to leave, and uh, uh, some neighbor heard the screams, which uh, initiated a call to law enforcement. A female showed up. He answered the door. And this had happened before. It, It had happened several times. Um, and he'd always been able to talk his way, charm his way out of it, and the cops were lackadaisical in their response. They didn't push it. This female didn't do it. He said, oh, she's in the shower, and he, he had warned her, you go in the shower, turn the water on, don't come out till I tell you. And so she said, I was standing there, and something told me to turn the water off. She it's, knew it was a do-or-die situation. Now it's now or never, now turn or the never. water off. The female cop heard the water go off and said, oh, she's done. Yeah, it, she's she's you know going to be fine and everything like that, and the female said the female cop said no, I'm going to talk to her right now, and when she opened up the door and those two made eye contact, the police officer knew what the hell was going on and took custody of her basically, and and uh, that ended it, but it, that was one of the most powerful um, moments of the trip was hearing her story about how. She got into that trade and how they, she got out. They trafficked her from the from the nation to uh, what was it to California, to Tijuana and back again. Yep. It was it was it was a horrible thing, and a lot of a lot of people out there do not know what is going on. Um, I mean, truthfully, did you guys ever hear of this? No, right? And mm-hmm. even some of the people that we went to, you know, we they that knew went on the ride. It. You know, Paul Gregory when we we. we after we got educated by uh, some of the um, you know people that we met there, he was like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this is going on right here, right here, one state away." What's happening? And we just did some research, and over 
over the last couple of years, there are over 5,700 unsolved cases just in the last couple of years that, um, you know, there's 5,700 families and probably more. That's the yeah, only ones that and are kids reported. And, and kids. And parents. Uh, so that's why this MMIW ride is so important. Be their voice. We want to be their voice. We want to help them out. Uh, we want to do what we can. Uh, but, man, the education purpose on this trip uh, will knock you out. It will really enlighten you. When you look at all the other stuff that's going around, man, this is something you got to grab a hold of and really support. So here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going back to the second annual. The, the 99% Radio Network is 100% committed we started this almost a year ago we're we're, we're going to see it through we, we promised them we would be their voice outside the reservation we we don't have you know we're not nbc news or whatever but we do have a voice especially in in the uh law-abiding motorcycle community where people will respond so next year april may we're going to convoy out there we're going to meet up somewhere in amarillo we're going to get jeeps we're going to get everybody we're a bunch of redneck guys and four wheel <laughs> drives whatever whatever it is whatever man. it is we're gonna and and motorcycles as well and we're gonna convoy from amarillo out there and we're gonna let them know that we stand with them by our presence as many as we can get and then we're gonna make the ride as badass as it was this year even more badass and i'll tell you why because we're gonna make this and trust me we're gonna do this it might take us the rest of my life to do it but we're gonna do it we're going to make this a destination event where people want to go there because of the cause, first and foremost. That has to be number one because we give voice to these um, survivors and these victims. And people go, I haven't heard about this, but I have got to do something to support the about nation. it and support them. So that's thing one. The ride will be epic. Friday, We're going to do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? But Friday night... If all works out at a at a this just primo location, all right, we'll have a traditional powwow with food for everyone. It'll be a feast. A feast out there. They and I'm I'm learning a couple of words here and there, right? So they use the word dene, and that means family, all right. So we'll have this big family, all of us, be extended family, everybody united in this fight. Um, to raise awareness and do something about uh, sex exploitation and human trafficking of, of Native American women. And, and we're going to do that. So Primo Place there at Wendell Rock, and we're going to see if we can't pull that one off, have this big powwow and a traditional blessing uh, of, of all the bikes and, and inter introduce people to some traditions, some, some Native American traditions that they might not otherwise uh, have been introduced to, or maybe they get it in a stereotype way, right? Because they watch cowboy movies on on right, uh, on right. TV, so they really don't have any idea. That that's what we'll do Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday we'll take off on the most badass. And I I talk to people. Uh, um, I talk, Paul Gregory, you mentioned, you know, people that have been to Sturgis multiple times, and he said that does not hold a candle to this. You go to Sturgis, it's a beautiful ride. You know, you you get to see uh, some cool stuff, but it's Let's be honest, Sturgis is commercialized. You go there to drink beer, see women dance on stage, and and uh, and see some. Really, that's pretty much it. This is a ride for a purpose. It's not yeah. just about enter. Yeah. Now it is entertaining because the ride is the most beautiful ride I've ever been on, to be honest with you. And I've traveled all over the country. Um, it it was just just amazing. And so that's what we're going to do next year. The big thing um, is support of the Navajo Nation. Let. Let them know that their voices are being heard. Yes. Let them know that they are not disposable. They are not savages, as they claim, you know, uh, they, the way the uh, American people look at them. And let's change that stigma and let's let's unite with them yeah. and, and do our best to uh, know more in 24. And, you and, know? and we started here on the knowledge base and we're, we're here. Yeah. And now we have to go down to here, but we have the right people in place to help us do that. Uh, we have formed a ride committee for 2025 uh, with uh, the folks that we met out there. And I think we, we if nothing else, we earned their uh, respect. They might think we're, you know, we're, we're ignorant outsiders, because we are. Right. right. Really, hey. if you get down to it, we are. But we're willing to learn. We're willing to put in the time and the effort. And uh, we talk about it on the show all the time. The 99% Radio ne Network uh, 
makes the effort, not the excuse, in order to make a difference. And, and that, and then the one other thing. We, we can't do everything. Is there ever one other thing with him? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, we, we can't do everything, but we can do one thing. And this is the one thing that we can do, and we're gonna we're gonna be committed to that. So oh, yeah. that was I think I've wrapped up You're pretty done? much. Yeah, Woo. I'm done. Yeah. All right, all right. So uh, once again, uh, this is all about the ladies. You know, we started out the show. The MLIW is all about the ladies and the children. But we are gonna take a quick break, talk about the high seas, quick commercial for the high seas rally, and we are gonna bring in the ladies of the leaders. And oh wait, 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 don't go yet. Because no. she's gotta pee so bad. I know she's gotta pee so bad. We're gonna just stay on here for a couple more minutes. <laughs> Alright, break it break it, Andrew. We're good to go. Alright, we'll be back after that. Hey, what's going on everybody? Cruise Director JT and I am standing right next to Lionel Gammon of Law Tigers. And big news, big announcement coming Big to news. <laughs> wait, big news, okay? Cruise director, where's cruise director? We have big news. Big news. There it is. All right. Coming to the High Seas Rally in 2024, four builders, four bikes. Lionel, what does this mean? Four builders, four bikes. You get a chance to win four in 24. High Seas Rally and the Law Tigers invited four builders to build each and every, well, four of you, a custom motorcycle. So we have Xavier, of course, of Provident Cycle Works. You guys know Xavier, love him. He's given Nikes for two years in a row now. Mm -hmm. And Xavier's helped us bring some of his friends. So we have Magic Mike from Magic Mike Designs in Vegas. We have Pat Patterson with Lead Sled, Lead Sled Customs out of Ohio. And then Rick Bray, RKB Customs out of Fresno, California. So these four builders have agreed to build us four motorcycles, fully custom. This is no run-of-the-mill regular OEM bike. This is a fully custom motorcycle, and you can win them. Absolutely. So right now, the way we've been doing it is you have the chance to win one, not anymore. It's four. 2024, win four in 24. So all you have to do is be on board. No need to buy extra tickets or anything like that. Just book your cabin, make sure you're on board in 2024, and you will be entered automatically to win four custom motorcycles. Now make sure you follow the journey on social media. These bikes are gonna be debuted at Daytona Bike Week in 2024. So stay tuned, and like I said, just make sure you are on board the ship. That's it. Big news! <laughs> See you on board, everybody. Hey, what? <laughs> Oh, you know what that, she tried to do? She timed that just right. You know what she tried to do? She tried to she tried to jump in the chair before we went back live so people wouldn't think she actually ran out to go she, pee. She she's got that. I always she, have to go one She's got that down to a Whatever. science. Hey, welcome back to the 99. Um, once again, it's all about the ladies. We are proud and honored to welcome the uh, the founding ladies of uh, a couple of different chapters of the la la leaders, 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 right? Leaders. Um, I don't want to say it off base. So we have Denton, Dallas, and Fort Worth here, right? Correct. Um, ladies, please introduce yourself because I'm really bad with names. Hi, I'm Sunshine. I'm with the Dallas Leaders. I've been there since 2017, and I've been riding for 27 years. Wow. So I love to encourage ladies to get out there and do things that they have never done before. Love it. The more, the merrier, because I have never had so much of a network of ladies of so much empowerment and control. I mean, it's just amazing. And I'm so excited about our International Female Ride Day on May 4th. All right. Yes. So, yes, you just share that one down. That way we'll yes. share this. Me and you will share this one. Okay. You share those. Hi, I'm Sonia, or Blow Pop. And there's a story. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely a story <laughs> behind story. Blow Pop. <laughs> See, sunshine, all right, the blonde hair, the sun's coming in. Blow pop. It's because I always have a blow pop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everywhere I go. You keep telling fact, yourself. I keep <laughs> you know, they, they say <laughs> you don't choose your road name, the road name, name chooses, chooses you. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jana. <laughs> Jana. Um, but I'm with the Fort Worth Leaders, and I, as well, have never been great with these ladies. They are so welcoming and encouraging 
and helpful. And again, with the International Female Rag Day, we're all excited, May 4th. Now you just, just before, you just, uh, before uh, we went on air, uh, you, you purchased, you made a nice purchase, didn't you? I did, I yeah, did. I, I, I guess you're asking for forgiveness now, right? Because you just said, screw it, I'm buying it. He forgave me very All much right. so because now he gets to ride because his bike's in the shop getting painted. So you bought a brand new street I bob. I bought a new 2023 yellow street bob. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it is spectacular. I had to have the, sheet, the seat shaped down because it was too wide and... Not so, you, so you're like the only one that goes to Vegas, buys a bike, and comes home with it. Most people will just go to Vegas and pawn the bike. Right, <laughs> probably. But yeah, I came home with that's one. That's self control that you came home with the bike. Well, yeah, God no, bless, that's man. Good. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So I guess I'll go next. Um, they call me Cosmo. Cosmo. And they call me Cosmo, and there's a reason why. <laughs> Um, ah. <laughs> I should, uh, well, the ladies used to laugh at me because I actually run um, a, um, um, a warranty mystery group, so I'm all over the country, and I usually have nice cocktails, and whenever we get to the girls, and then everyone order a beer or, or a shot, and they're like, excuse me, can I have a Cosmopolitan <laughs> with a lemon twist? And with, yeah, so you drink with the pinky that, up the whole much, bit, the whole bit? Much. All right. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> Cosmo, as, as you will, people call me Cosmo because, again, I'm out of this world. I'm just a, always a mess. <laughs> on the day, right? <laughs> but I am um, one of the founders for the Dallas, all right? But I do, before we introduce our last girl, I do want to mention something about Velitas, if that's okay. Yeah, so of course. give you a little... This is your tidbits, space. This is a your little space, tidbits. please. So we obviously are all here, um, and we're the founders of Velitas um, in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, we call ourselves the North Texas Velitas. Um, Velitas is, just so everybody understands, is an all-women's motorcycle collective. You know, we're fueled by passion, we're ignited by sisterhood, um, and we empower other women riders. So just as a general what the look what the leaders is and this is what's going to be really really neat a lot of people don't realize this we are a global community with the focus on bringing obviously um together all ages of women all type of different riding levels whether it is somebody who just got their license or somebody who's been riding for 60 years two or three wheels um you know we are inclusivity as our co you know focus is 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 women environment where riders are greeted with open arms. So the Lita's actually started, it was founded in 2015. And here's what's crazy. I don't know if anybody knows this or not, but we are in 338 cities. Wow. Uh -huh. We have over 26,000 riders, women, all women. You know, I, I don't think there's a, you know, I think you are, you, you are almost toppling the Blue Knights, which is, the Blue Knights is probably one of the largest MCs out there, law abiding MCs out there, the right. Blue Knights, you guys are. And we're not considered an MC. No, you're we, a collective. Right, right, we are a motorcycle collective. We are basically an all women's riding group. We right. are the largest in the world, wow. all women's motorcycle group. In fact, we actually even have a plaque up in the Harley Davidson oh. mu Museum up in, uh, in Milwaukee. Fantastic. So here's what's crazy we are in 33 countries. Wow, I didn't okay. know Okay, not only including North America, and here's some of the countries that we're in, which is just mind-blowing. We're in Africa, we're in Asia, Central America, we have Europe, South America, and then Oceania. So we have wow. women that are riding in Germany, in, in Bermuda, you know I mean, in Bermuda, in the Bahamas, I mean, you name it, we are everywhere. Wow. <laughs> You know, I think that's fantastic. We've we've had in the past on this show, we've had uh, like the Guardian Bells, uh, we've had them on the show. We had the Night Ravens from Romania, and how the um, women coming together and forming these MCs and uh, RCs and stuff. There, it, it seems to be spreading. And uh, just a a personal observation, I didn't have, uh, I guess, probably any experience writing with a woman until this pa past so week. So she blew right? you away on the until, road. Listen, <laughs> yeah. But, we get looks but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, um, she had such uh, self-confidence, right? And I know you ride too. We haven't, we haven't had a chance to uh, ride together. But um, Lorinda uh, Warren, the, the, the um, Native American lady that 
uh, woman that uh, led us uh, around all of it, uh, she had that command presence, like, mm-hmm. hey, I can, okay, this is what we're going to do. I got my two guys, and she had her two guys that were there to, you know, first off, they were there to, to like, keep an eye on her and make sure that, you know, we were square. They were looking mm-hmm. after her. Uh, but after that, they were there to help us after we earned her trust. But she took control of that ride. That lady could ride. I had, and, and you know how it is when you, you ride with certain people, and in, when you're in your, like with your club or whatever, you have a place where you, you know you ride, and you get comfortable riding next to certain people because you know if this happens, they're doing that. If that happens, they're doing this. And then you get next to a stranger in like some of these group rides, and you're, you know, you're doing the snake thing. You're back right. and forth. You don't really know. We didn't have that problem. I mean, it was this. This is a woman who was confident, uh, and it, it kind of, to be honest, and I don't think I'm a chauvinist or anything like that. Just don't have <coughs> any experience about it. No, so I had something. Were you being throat. a smart I had ass? Something in my throat. Okay, <laughs> but it changed my perspective because she was so strong, uh, of a of a leader for one. Clearly, she was a leader. Uh, the, the the men who were no slouches themselves were deferential to her. They recognized she could freaking go uh she knew how to handle that bike she knew how to ride she uh she wasn't unsafe even at 125 mile an hour she she knew what she was doing and i was like you know watching her ride uh we were we were i got a chance to ride alongside of her for a while felt very comfortable and what nothing (laughs) nothing i saw that i saw you blink i twitch i saw you blink (laughs) are you in on that too Go ahead. I want to. I want to. What, what were you blinking for? No. Well, just... you know, there's one. There's, they say statistic wise, one in every five riders now are female. Yeah, I didn't know well, that. Well, the, the one thing, more, the one thing yeah. I do want to touch on, Cosmo, that you said, um, is that it's open to all levels of experience, and I know, um, like in in with men, we'll always try to outprove each other. We'll always, and we never want to show. Uh, oh, we're not that great with this. That you know, we want, we always want to, you know, be able to keep up. And uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but in the female uh, clubs or, or collectives or riding, it could be a little intimidating, right? So you guys embrace that, and I, I think that's great that you know, y- because men aren't going to be like, all right, let's do this. You know, they're going to be like, just suck it up and let's go. You guys will embrace your other female riders and say, all right, we're we're with you. You know, yeah. well, let's. Let's take it slow. So I like that, that it's open up to all levels mm-hmm. of uh, experience. That's yeah. great. So I'm Nina, the negotiator <coughs> Brown. The negotiator. Uh-huh. Yes. And well, how'd you get that name? Uh, you know, that, sounds, that sounds like, a, uh, what is that, that movie? movie? Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> Nina, Nina Brown, the oh, negotiator. Well, one of the judges, you know, one of the judge shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a co-founder of the Denton Litas, and to kind of touch back on what you guys were talking about earlier with the ride, I started out with the Muckleshoot Police Department as a tribal officer in Washington State, and so with my background and my experience, I can definitely tell you everything that you guys are discussing, learning, and sharing is extremely important, and it's spot on. So I'm excited to hear about what's going to come next year and the years thereafter with this event, and I would love to participate as well. We would love to have you. Yeah. Thank now, you. Now, with your background, you know, we talk, we're we only talking about one the new, in New Mexico, the, the Navajo Arizona Nation. Yeah. Yeah. There, are, there are nations all over the place. Correct. And w- with you in Washington, I'm sure they are uh, feeling the same thing yes. or going through the same thing, correct? Yes, absolutely. Very similar circumstances, yeah. unfortunately. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when you're bringing light to this topic and this – extremely sad situation yes it's a very good thing that you guys are doing this and like i said bringing light to a a topic that a lot of people want to shun away from but it's extremely important and these ladies and the tribe itself need your help so Uh, awesome awesome appreciate that appreciate that all All right we'll make sure we get the word out (laughs) and and you know what listen i I don't think you can understate honestly the significance of that right there because this is this is women who you were just using the words empowered or maybe you were, yeah. you said yeah. yes. you know there was empowerment by your ability to get on the bike and ride and come and go as you please and whatnot and you're going to be going out there um and and meeting women who are not empowered they're they 
there are survivors, there are victims, there are the families, right? And I, I think that would oh, make, yes. honest to God, I think that would make women such supporting women, man. Yes, that's that's such huge. a powerful yes, that's exactly statement. That's what the leaders are all about. To s- inspiring. That's yes. Inspiring. To for for women from outside. Yeah. Of the reservation, right? Yeah. And women like uh, Muzzy and, and Lorinda that we met, they they certainly are doing their part, right? They're they definitely, do, yeah. you're right. They're definitely two strong uh, women. Nothing, no wallflowers there whatsoever. Um, but to have other women coming from outside and who are empowered, right, saying, "We hear you, ladies. We hear you, mm-hmm. and we're going to help lend our voice because we can say what we want and do what we want out here." In, in DFW and and you know the surrounding area and other the other we can do that. Mm-hmm. These women, because of cultural tradition, there's a lot of a lot of as you know if you worked on the reservation, you know there's yes. in the Native American Native American culture. And I'm I'm on this learning curve right now, learning all of this, trying to educate myself so I have a little bit of of uh, base. Like um, it tastes better with <laughs> vodka in it, brother. Um, you know, there's all these cultural things um, about speaking out, you know, yeah. and, and uh, even though, uh, like the Navajo is, is matriarchal, there's there's just so many factors that us outside that we, we don't understand, yeah. and we have to rely on them to help. But I, I already can see, just yeah. by you saying yeah. that, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Negotiator, that um, uh, having a, a powerful group, a well-established powerful group of women going out there, um, and and lending your voice um, to the ones that are there, uh, you know, we had some powerful women. With my my yeah. V's very strong willed, and and I'm in I'm in on this. I know when you get out there, you're going to be the same way. You've you've proven yourself this week. What you what you what you bring <laughs> what you bring to the table, but. <laughs> Well, the only, they'll the only, make a difference. The only problem, they'll make yes, a difference. Yeah, but the only problem I see is that Cosmo and Pitbull, uh, there, there is no drinking on the reservation. That's <laughs> yeah. we'll oh, that's more. a deal breaker. Or, well, yeah, it's not a deal breaker. We just it's not a deal breaker. We, but we I'm like away. MacGyver. Hold on, I can figure that so, out. So, but no, it's it is no no. It, it what he said is really important culturally. Okay, no. because <laughs> alcohol has been alcohol and drugs okay, have right. been and are such a horrible problem right it's a plague mm-hmm. out there it yes. kills many 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 people mm-hmm. um gabriel uh, has lost family members you, too you're the one that told me on your way here okay. pick up a case Wh- of beer <laughs> <laughs> hey hey where is it <laughs> pick up a case of beer because tuba city is dry and we'll drink it in our hotel room <laughs> Busted. Okay, I'm, I'm man enough to man up. I did say that, okay? I said we're not going to do it in public. We're not going to disrespect right, them. Right. We'll do it in the privacy of the room and not tell anybody about it, right? But that was after Everybody we had a really – that was – this is after the fact, okay? And, and Gallup, you can, you can have a beer in Gallup. It's, it's, it's allowed. But um, this is something that people should know. We don't drink um, when we're involved with that. We don't. Right. We don't do yeah, drugs. Just so you know, it, it, no matter what thing that we do, okay, we um, are all about in safety of our women. Yeah. Yes. Um, we, you know, what I mean, we encourage women to ride. Um, if you guys want to have a good time, that's fine. You may have a beer or a cocktail or something like that. But I will tell you what, we will not tolerate someone acting a fool. No. Right exactly. No. So, and and so, um, we're all about the quick. safety of our girls. Number yep. one. And the respect of the community that we're, that we're going right. to. Yep. So and just so you know, that's that is, I love to hear that because. That. Yeah. I will drink later when I get to my hotel. Okay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> off the reservation. Yes. What I'm talking about, though, in general, though, we respect for what we do. Yep. And, and we make sure that our girls are safe at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You respect their, this is their country, yeah, their that. their yeah. laws. And, and, uh, and, uh, and our other women riders as well. Right. Yeah. So. Right. And me personally, I have always heard of these things happening, but I didn't really know how I could actually help and, mm-hmm. you know, contribute to that cause. So hearing about this ride really in, in really makes me feel that this is something that I could definitely help in. Yeah. So. Oh, oh. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. I, I, I think it would be. Not just in Dallas. Yeah. I mean, oh, wow. the whole yeah, country you such a big that, group. you know, yeah, even we'll probably some yesterday. from other countries, too. Well, so. so I'm glad you said that because our, our mission here is to, first and foremost, 
lend a voice outside the reservation, right? Okay. And if you take what we've said, just what little we've said today, and then you go home and you start educating yourself mm -hmm. about MMIW, right? And the whole, you know, you talk to Motivision Matt Nokas, who literally travels around the world trying to expose these human trafficking rat lines yeah. that lead to Dallas. You know, Dallas is a hub oh, yeah. of human trafficking, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. It's a huge hub. A lot of women get funneled through here, get held in homes uh, all around here. And we, we, we won't take the time to go into our experiences. But if you educate yourself on that, and then all of a sudden you start talking to somebody who starts talking to somebody going, why in 2024 are we letting this happen? Okay, why aren't we holding these assholes that do this accountable? Who, who's going to stand up to them? Because let's be honest, some people are afraid of them. 26,000 women of the leaders will stand up. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's a lot right. of estrogen, right. man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about empowerment and encouragement. This is yeah. why we're really, you know, here yeah. not to only talk about the leaders, but we're talking, we're about to talk about. Hey, to Angela, can you check the sound? I'm getting s multiple messages saying losing sound. Sound is gone. Sound is gone. Oh. Do we have sound? We have sound? Okay. We have sound. There you go. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry check, to interrupt check. you. Check, check. So uh, let's get back on to negotiator uh, with the Denton. Just stay close to the mic. Okay. So, again, like I said, I'm a co-founder with the Denton Leaders, and I'm going to discuss today what we're here for, and that is International Female Ride Day, also referred to as IFRD. This day was started back in 2007 by Vicki Gray. She had a phenomenal idea to celebrate all motorcycle women riders, and it's annually every first Saturday in May, and it's not just here in our country, but it's worldwide, and it's a day to celebrate women who ride and ride any type of motorcycle with any level of experience like we've discussed. It's um, a day where we just go out and we ride, and we celebrate ourselves for being female women riders and supporting one another, which is what we have talked about. That is something that is extremely important in the LIDA communities, is support, empowerment, embracing that, you know, this, riding a motorcycle can be scary. And there's a lot of ladies that are new to it, and some of the other people will take them in and take them under their wing and show them things that will help them become a stronger rider, a stronger person, and hopefully pass that down to the next new rider as well. So this goes on at many different locations throughout the world. Ours will be at American Eagle Harley-Davidson on May 4th from 11 to 3. Everyone's welcome to come out and celebrate with us. It's going to be the North Texas Litas, so that will be Fort Worth, Denton, and Dallas. And it's going to be a great opportunity to come out, not only to meet us, get to ask us questions, but to celebrate with us on our important day. This is like Christmas to us. Um, it's the one day of the year that we can go out and have our sisterhood, ride together, celebrate. We do activities at the dealership, so there'll be some uh, vendors there. There will be different types of announcements that we'll make. There'll demos. be some demos, demo rides, demo demo rides yeah. of different types. Yeah. Come try a new bike. <laughs> nice. Have a live band, food, beverages. Yeah, and every woman that participates the, for in this actual IFRD comes from a diverse, unique world. None of us are the same. All of us are very different, but we come together because we have com one commonality that brings us together, and that's motorcycle riding. Yeah. So come celebrate with us on May 4th at American Eagle from 11 to 3. Well, let me ask some. Um, that's, this is open to men, too, right? The celebration to is open you, to, to men. Yes, okay, we, I love, wanna, I we wanna, love when the guys come out and support us. That's a big deal. Yeah, I just want to yeah. make you know make that uh, clear that this is it's a it's a uh, ladies event, but men are welcome to join in and support. And men, get out there and support because you know our ladies always support us in everything we do. We can go out there and support them on this. This is their day. We and this is our chance to show them that we support them. So we would really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we make the best partners. <laughs> so, um, how long have you been riding? I've been riding just over two years. Just over two years. Yes. So, different levels of riding, 26, 27? 27 years. 27 years. What started you in riding? Oh, well, my husband, of course. You know, <laughs> I got to learn. That. Yeah, I got to learn on the 
you know, with him on the back of my motorcycle, on his oh. motorcycle. Yeah. So, <laughs> I I don't know how big your husband is, and <laughs> I, I don't want to say he rode bitch. <laughs> That's what they Muppet. call it. He rode bitch, but of course he would not. He would die to do that now. I asked him, I said, you want to ride on the back? Hell no, you're riding on the back, right? So, yeah, mm -hmm. I learned with him on the back, and then, of course, later, I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it by myself and see how I do. And right. I rode down the road and back, and I was like, hey, this is so much easier without your ass right. on the back. <laughs> I was like, geez, I didn't realize what a difference it made. But Sunshine has so a unique unique thing. Your mother is how old is your mom? My mom's 92. And she rode. She's I had her motorcycle. And she still has her license. Yeah, she still has her really? license. Yeah, it's a joke. You know, oh. she's just like, well, you know, um, when they asked me to renew, and I'm like, yeah, I want to <laughs> keep my motorcycles, I might want to ride. <laughs> you know? So, your mom's yeah. so badass. Yeah, she, she, did. she had a little Honda 160. My dad had a Honda 305 in the 60s. And my brother, he's the oldest. He's 21 years older than me. So there's five of us. I'm the youngest. He's the oldest. And he's been riding Harleys his whole life. And he had a new Sportster at the time whenever I came along, right? <laughs> but I always rode on the back and never really rode my own right. until, you know, I rode little bikes and everything when I was a kid. But it was so much different when you actually get on a big bike, yeah. you know, and you can go fast. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's exciting yeah that's a lot more fun but yeah I mean it's, it's been a great great experience and since I've had kids and now they're empty nester you know I don't have kids anymore I can go ride and enjoy myself I mean, my husband used to ride all the time when my kids were little, mm -hmm. and I'd be stuck at home with babies, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I told him, my time's a coming, you know, and he's like, what is that supposed to mean? I'm like, dude, <laughs> it means <laughs> when it comes my time, I want you I'm to ditch. Yep. No bitching about it. You just say, <laughs> honey, you have fun. Good. Have a good time. Be safe. I love you. See you when you get back, right? And so... I've gone from that, you know, I've gone out, I met new ladies, and I love meeting new ladies that love to ride, mm -hmm. and it's been the best network of my life. I mean, it's been the best. Okay. So I encourage anyone that's ever dreamed of riding, get out there and do it, because you can do it. It's mm -hmm. not impossible. So I have a funny story how I started riding. <laughs> So um, I'm originally from Queens, New York. My oh, nice. Mm -hmm. my, my father's from New York here. I'm Where in Yorker. Queens? Flushing, Queens. What? My father lived in Flushing. Really? Right, at, right next to the uh, 109th precinct. Well, it was 149th yeah, uh, right. by Northern Boulevard and Roosevelt. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, neighbors. we're neighbors. <laughs> we're yeah, actually neighbors. Uh, My father's company was transferred to Cleveland, Ohio years ago, or when I was 16, 17. So it was horrible going from New York to Cleveland. Mm. Um, in 2007, um, my company transferred me from Cleveland to, to Dallas. Um, so, um, and again, I travel. I'm probably about 75,000 miles a year in the air. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I'm all over the country. Still? Yeah. Yep. The planes Still. falling apart the way they are falling apart, um, man. I'm I'd in. Be, you know I'd what? I look at it like there, this. If, if it's your time, yeah. it's your time. Yeah, yeah, I, what yeah. are you going to do? All I'm going to do is just close my eyes. That's all <laughs> I'm going to do. And just yeah, pray. Well, That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> But so I travel so much, and um, in, up in Cleveland, when I was there, my husband would ride with his brother um, and all his friends, and and, um, and a few years back, um, in, in 2014 or 15, his brother moved from um, Cleveland to Dallas and stayed with us with his son, and, you know, almost like, you know, he stayed with us, so my husband was like, woohoo, I got somebody to ride with, you know, kind of thing. So um, I travel, and, you know, when I get home on an airport. Sometimes I'm stuck in an airport all day long, so when I get home, I just want to go to bed and take a, the heels off, the suit. I look yeah. very completely different than the way I look right now, I tell you. I take everything Aww. off, the wife, the eye, you know, to pull the eyelashes off and, and just, just lay on the couch and veg. My husband walked out of the bedroom, it's probably about 9.30 at night, and I see him with his motorcycle boots, and I says, well, where are you going? I'm going riding. <laughs> Oh, you want to go? <laughs> First of all, I am not going to go looking the way I did, right? I, I still have to be kind of, you know, at that moment, that time, I have to look, you know, cute to be on the back of that bike. <laughs> and I don't know what got over me, but I said, you know what? Just go. Because here's what's going to happen. You go ahead and go out. As soon as you walk out the door, I'm going to sign up to learn how to ride a motorcycle. 
I'm going to get my own motorcycle, and I'm going to get my old, own girl gang, and you're going to wish you were riding with me. Yeah. <laughs> I got on my iPad that night, signed up for motorcycle riding lessons, which I, I'm going to tell you, I want to back it up a little bit, but I've, I've ridden bikes before because I had boyfriends that were right. drunk, and they're like, hey, and I, and I was drove <laughs> five-speed or whatever. <laughs> it's like, I'll tell you how to dr- you know, ride. So, And my daughter's been riding since she was five. My daughter's now 31 years old. You wow. know what I mean? But she's been riding, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So, yeah. Um, next thing you know, um, I bought myself a 2001 Fat Boy. It's a five-speed you know, carburetor, heavy, heavy bike. White wall tires, beautiful. Uh, I loved it. It was, uh, well, it was it, yeah. I thought it was a Cadillac. <laughs> Everyone thought I should get something, you know, really light or a sports well, I'm five seven, and I just don't. I feel like a, an oversized, <laughs> you know, circus bear on on, on yeah, it. Yeah, so I just couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. So I I got this, and I learned, and I'm gonna tell you, and I tell all the women everywhere I talk to, I can't tell you how many times I dropped it. It's not if it's when, when I've dropped it and but I've never dropped it riding it's always been turning in a parking lot mm. or I forgot to put my feet down at a stoplight yeah. all of a sudden I just go sideways <laughs> 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 um, so um, I looked up the you know women groups in Dallas motorcycle groups and I found the leaders and this was in 2017 and I joined and these women taught me very different the ride than my husband and his brother. Mm. I actually learned with hand signals and laws and rules and this is how you ride in the group. And I remember crying <laughs> on a highway because again, I live in Dallas and I was scared to death. And so I would always go to East Texas or Denton is who I would ride with all the time in Fort Worth. Um, and yeah, so. Yeah, riding through Dallas was scary. It's white knuckles. So yeah, I'm gonna tell scary. you. You know, how many years later, I have now another motorcycle. When I turned 50, I bought myself a brand new uh, 22 Road Glide Special. I did it for myself. I said, I bought it, so now I got two. It's like now I have this obsession. <laughs> I probably have over 60,000 miles underneath me now. Wow. And what I do and what I've learned, and maybe because I grew up in New York and I rode in New York, um, is the Dallas leaders bring something a little different than maybe Denton or, or East Texas. A lot of women will not ride with us because, oh, you're Dallas. Ooh, the traffic, ooh, the highways. So we we ride very different, and I teach women how to ride in the city. Yeah. I teach women yeah. how to ride, where to ride on the Dallas North Tollway, what lane you should go into on 75. When you go on 35, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go this way, we're gonna go that way. In Denton or Fort Worth or East Texas, when you have group rides as a country, yeah. they're all together. In Dallas, we have rides, we maybe have small groups, five, 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 five. <laughs> There's none. There's no way all of us are gonna yeah. get on the Dallas Tollway together. Right, 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 right. So we teach other women how to ride city, which you is know, very and different. And you, really you, you bring up a great point because a lot of people do not know the difference it's a big between city difference. riding, yeah. you know, um, and you, we see it all the time. Even even with guy clubs uh, or rides, everybody's trying to stay together through the city, and it's just it's not, not feasible. It's not. Yeah, it's not. an impossible feat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unle- unless you unless you have an escort, um, and and and, and things, and it's even tough. It's even tough. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, I've been writing for a little over two years. What um, made you? Uh, basically, my husband knew that all the kids that we had, we had five kids, blended family, had our youngest started to get to senior year, and he was thought. My wife is a go, go, go person. This is not going to be a good situation for her. <laughs> she has a very supportive husband. Yes. And so for our birth, my birthday and our anniversary are two days apart. So he bought me an MSF course while I was rehabbing from major back surgery, actually. And wow. I was I kept watching Norman Reedus, riding with Norman Reedus, and thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. when I get my back up to speed again, that's what I'm doing. I'm riding all over the place, not just locally, but I want to ride everywhere. And so he bought me the course. I had never even ridden a motorcycle. I'd never ridden even in the back of a motorcycle. So I get to the class. I'm very intimidated, but I thought, okay, I'm just going to watch what everyone else is do, doing, and then I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so except I, if they fall. Yeah, except if they <laughs> fall. So I didn't fall, and I did pass the class, and I went and got my, my endorsement on my license the very next day. I had talked my husband into buying me a motorcycle before the class. 
And so he bought me a, a 20 soft tail and soft tail classic. And that night I went out and rode around in the church parking lot. And he said, I knew you were going to take to it right away. Then he says, do you want to go home? And I said, no, I want to keep riding. He said, okay, well, I'm going home. I said, okay, that's cool. I'll ride by myself. Deuces. Yep. So <laughs> and that's where it all began. And in two years, I'm sitting at probably 26,000 miles. I've ridden wow. several states. I've gone to Kansas, to North Dakota in one day. Um, I just got back from Arizona. I've been to Kentucky. So, yeah, I'm starting that. The big picture dream, I'm starting it now. Piece awesome. By piece. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And the experience, obviously, you know, you, when you first started riding with Alita. I mean, I guess that because me and Jamie have been around. Just bring the mic. Just bring the mic. Yep, nope. Me and Jamie have been around. You know, Jamie's actually considered one of the OGs of Dallas. She started right when the, the Litas started in 2016, the, uh, the Dallas Litas. It was the first uh, Litas in all of Texas. Dallas. What, now, what? Now you've been all over the – where did they originally start the Litas? It, well, the founder's from uh, Utah. Utah. It's Utah. Okay. It's from U Utah. So it started and in Utah so and it spread out. Yep, spread and it's just spreading like crazy. So because of Dallas, Denton came, Fort Worth came, Got Houston, it. you know what I mean? So it kind of branched Austin, and, and it really br has branched off. But you rode with us, and again, being a brand new rider with the lead is the same thing. I think you had a great experience. Oh, absolutely. I can tell you right now, I have a handful of ladies that took me under their wing immediately literally showed up to my house and said we'll help you get your motorcycle out of the garage and down the driveway if, sh if you need us to um come on let's go for a day ride come on let's take it let's go to breakfast i mean anything that they could do to encourage me to get out and ride and give me tips um hey when you're at a stoplight you know leave it in first gear always watch your mirrors so you need to pull out if something is not stopping behind you or whatever the case may be just really embraced me um as a new rider and you know, understood the fact that this was a passion that they could see in me from the get-go, but it was so new to me that right. they really just helped me flourish in that area and didn't make me feel bad. I, I too dropped my bike many a times, <laughs> twice in one day, in fact. <laughs> On one of my Dallas rides. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Through Dallas downtown. And I will tell you, bouncing around the parking lot of a gas station hurts, but your ego hurts even worse. Oh. <laughs> So they teach you how to pick up your bike. They t they basically are like, hey, it's good. We all do it. Mm -hmm. Keep your chin up. You, let's do this rest of this ride. And, you know, it taught me a lot. It, it not only showed me that they were supportive as women, supporting women. You know, they, they walked the walk. It wasn't all just talk. Um, it's, it's beyond that. You grow phenomenal friendships in this motorcycle riding sisterhood. community mm -hmm. correct yeah. a sisterhood yes so i have not only just ridden with these ladies but in times of need i've called them up and said hey this is what's going on i need to talk or hey i'm thinking of going on this ride y'all want to jump in um so it's just been a really big community of just love of women and you know that's hard to find in this day and age especially so yeah so different and we all come from different walks of life but yet we all embrace each other's differences and really just want to see everyone do well and ride and be happy and have fun. Have mm -hmm. fun, really. That's what this is all about. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Uh. You can ride, girl. <laughs> I started. Just bring it closer. Bring it closer. <laughs> I started when I was <laughs> 19. <laughs> I do need a high chair. You need a booster uh, seat on I your do, bike? I do. <laughs> uh, well, I have, as my husband calls it, a shortster. That's <laughs> what I have, you know, that's that's badass brutal Betty. That's my baby. Um, but I started when I was 19. I was that stupid girl on the back with my little Air Force dude um, <laughs> that I was in the bikini and the kids going 120 down the road. Oh, okay. So I was that stupid girl. And then I actually graduated to the riding and I did it for four or five years, and then I stopped, you know, had the babies, did all of that stuff, and in 2020, I think it was, I was at Stroker's, and I saw Betty, and she yelled at me so loud, I told my husband, I said, that's the one, and by the next week, I had her, and then I decided to put new bars, I had her custom painted, um, everything. So you she's know, I, I love to hear this 
you know, it's just, right? You hear like, <laughs> it's it's like um, with the ladies just talking about. I, I put new bars on new pegs. I, I had a cousin. I chopped a seat down. Tell it's 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 wonderful to hear that you guys have so much passion for mm-hmm. and love for what you do, man. Because you usually hear just guys talk about like I <laughs> I chopped it here. I did this. I you know I, I brought this in, and you and you're just like. It's so cool. So usually when we bring clubs or groups in, you know, we always get an explanation about what the cut represents. Like, how, you know, what does that mean to you or whatever? So on, and how did you come up with a name uh, for your club and whatnot? So I want to know what's the origin, what's the meaning behind Lita's? What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Oh, you got your answer. And that's the truth. Yeah. But yeah. my Facebook is, my name is Sonia Lita, and it's been that way for 12 years. So I think it's kind of ironic that I ended up wow. writing with the Litas. But I have also, I have a little seven-year-old granddaughter. She is my ride or die. She is my, don't let her know this, anybody <laughs> know this, but she's my favorite. <laughs> so I recently bought her a helmet. I bought a harness. I had that little baby on the back last week. Nice. We were around awesome. the neighborhood. I love that. And she's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I did that yeah. I did that with my grandson. I, I bought him yeah. a cut. I mm-hmm. bought him a cut because uh-huh. they, call, they call me Sideshow. So he wanted a little, we call him Sidekick. He jumps on the back of the bike mm-hmm. and he, lo- he loves to get a helmet and my the whole bit. Oh, yeah. We call him Mad Max. Mad Max? Yeah. Because yeah. kids love it. I got to tell you, to be honest, I you don't know what you don't know, right? I thought the lead is. Because, you know, homie. Homie and friends. Mm-hmm. Homie, right. homie and friends. Homie's been on the show a number of times. And we have a, we we, are. Yeah, we have a relationship with him and stuff. And, and he's always talking about, you know, the y'all. The lead is all the time. So I figured, huh, you know, homie. Um, he, I thought the same exact. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's always talking about being a poor Sancho and, and all that. I figured, <laughs> all right. So, you know, homie and, and homie's, uh, you know, Hispanic. And I'm thinking, all right, so Lita's. Uh, all right, that's probably a connection somewhere. That's what yeah. I actually thought. I had no idea. I had no idea. And I thought the Lita's when homie You thought the spoke, same thing. I thought the Lita's were just based here. No. I thought they were just. Yeah. Uh, you I know, thought they just, were like something he'd kind of created. Yes, we, just the uh, female so version yeah. of homie. So we call our men. <laughs> we call our men our Lito's. <laughs> uh, we call we refer to them as Arlitos. Now that that I think is just a okay. Well, Texas the name thing. had to come from somewhere though. So it, how did it, okay? So I'm going to be honest with you. When you go on to Valitas.co, which is the actual um, global website, it asks where did the name come up with or where did it come from, and, and it didn't come from anything. She just liked the name and the founder, <laughs> and it, she needed wow. something right away, and that's what it was. It's just Alitas. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, it, it, it works. It, it works, you know? and but it I, works. I had no idea that you were twenty, almost twenty-seven thousand strong worldwide. Yep. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people in the, in the DFW area didn't, didn't know, that, know that as well. So, uh, man, once again, education, and and that's what it's all about. If you just sit and you learn about other people, I would have never known that. You, you thought the same thing. Yeah. And I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to ask that question. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> because and I just thought you were just homie and friends. That's what we thought. Yeah. Well, Jeanette, we never said anything. Was yeah, like you're that right. The founder for the Fort Worth um, right. Lita's. And, and she's one of the ones, I call her one of the OGs. You know what I mean? Yeah. That from the Lita's has been around for a very long time. And she, even when I started with the Lita's, she was one that um, encouraged me to rise. And, so. and in all fairness, homie always says, my Lita's. He, yeah. he always uh-huh. refers that's to exactly that it. That way, he yeah. always says, my Lita's. So we just kind yeah. of like made yep. the connection. That oh, that's now, funny. Now, let me ask you that. that. I don't know if I'm going off base. Remember, uh, I forgot what her name was down in Galveston, um, who runs the largest uh, Leather, leather and Lace? Was it Leather, yeah, it was leather, leather and Lace. lace the um, yep. Ladies she, and Leather. Yep, ah. Ladies and Leather. She runs the ladies largest. Yeah. largest yeah. Yeah. Amber. 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 Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Yep. She runs the largest uh, female rally, rally yep. parade. Yep. You, We're there. You guys are there? We are. Oh, yeah. We are there. All right. I wasn't able to go this year uh, just because we had some other commitments that we had to take care of. You know, we as a gr- as groups, we try to support anything with any other women type of riding or camaraderie or, or, or a get-together. So sometimes it is um, uh, uh, ladies in leather. Sometimes it's um, leather... 
Space Grace and Gary. Thank you. Another one. I apologize. Um, yeah. and, and, and then we have one up in Oklahoma that we'll, we'll support. Um, there's some events that maybe um, Alita's down in Houston is doing a big thing. So we try to really try to, to, to embrace and try to, to do all stuff. But we are a big fan of, of Lil. You know, yeah. um, I'm sitting here listening to each of you talk and, and about your experiences about riding. And my mind... It, you don't know me, but my mind is always going, thinking about stuff, and I'm I'm still thinking about MMIW, right? And I'm thinking, how can we plug these these strong women into this? And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, they there's probably a lot like for me and you, they they don't know either, but maybe they'll educate themselves. And I was just thinking, this visual is running through my head as you were talking. I was thinking, you know, we we always say because of our careers, you know, we were both law enforcement. Many times, you know, you you have to go through that door right there, and you don't know what's on the other side. But you trust your your training, your intuition, your 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 partners, your partners that you can handle whatever's there. Maybe nothing's there, but maybe there's a, someone that means you harm on the backside of that door. So I had this visual in my head of you guys coming into this ride, being a part, and figuratively kicking that door open. Leading, you don't. You don't know. You yeah. don't know what's on the other side of that door. You don't know what you don't know. But you know something there, and you know it's bad, or you wouldn't be there in the first place. Right. Well, how cool would it be if the if an all women group led into Window Rock, to, right, to show support, leading yeah. that convoy, because that that idea. that's women, oh, that. yeah. women yeah. supporting yeah. women, man. Yeah. You get all the leaders yeah. from all around. They are they are the they are the leader. They are taking charge, and they're kicking down that door. They're helping with everybody. Well, they're helping the uh, the people also involved. Albuquerque leaders, by the way. Oh, wow. okay. Yep. And going back to what you were saying we about kicking in the way. door and not having your the, the unknown on the other side, you know. And every time one of those kinds of missions comes up, you always know there's somebody though that I can help. And in this circumstance, it's those women. Mm -hmm. And that's what LIDAs stand for. That's what we do. We help other that's women. That's what I was, as you yeah, were talking, exactly. I was seeing yeah. in so my, my head you guys going out there and, and making, by your presence, maybe maybe it is riding at the, at the lead um, and going in there and saying, ladies, the survivors, the, the family members, we're from all over the country, all over the world, and we're lending our voice, our efforts, to you, to you to support we you. Are, it's so crazy how much we empower women just by pulling up as a group. Yeah. You, yes. We you, have women all the time saying to me, "You go, you go, girls." Wow. Yeah. You, you yeah. know why that would make such an impactful statement as well? Looking on the mental health aspect of this, okay. A lot of these women now have trust issues. They have insecurity issues with, with men. men, of yes. course. Mm -hmm. So to be embraced and empowered by the women leaders, it. it build strength in them, mm -hmm. you know, because some of them, you know, get a little intimidated. Even when we were talking to that lady over at Gallup, you know, I, I before I, she was was getting me emotional, I, I asked her if I can give her a hug, you know, and I, and I felt she was kind of like a little... That's you know, how I feel when you asked me if you can give me one. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. <laughs> I always got to ask permission. You never know these days. My answer you know? is no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we know. Take the mic away from her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, you know, if you have Albuquerque and you have uh, Vegas, what we're talking about with this convoy is groups from all across the country uh, meeting at certain points and then rolling into uh, the nation and showing that all these people from all over the world still care about you. We hear you, and man, it will it will make a great impact on so many. But even if you just change one life. That's all that matters. Exactly. Yeah. That's all that yep. matters. Yeah. And that's why I said it's just that one person that you can help behind that door. Yeah. Whether you know it's going to be scary or not, it's scary for them too. Listen, uh, if when you go out there, you'll have a different perspective on what help means and what your involvement means. But if you can envision that and spread that idea to folks who haven't been out there and seen it, trust me, I, I can because I've been there a number of times now and I can see the impact that you all could have going in strong, letting those, I mean, and, and the people that would be there on the receiving end of that, it would literally it would uh, change the face. It would change. Yeah. I, 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 I'm telling you, please, I'm asking you, please from the, from Sideshow and I and Pitbull, the 99, consider it, consider it trying to get your, 
uh, group because we're going to be working over the over the next coming months to get you know some of these uh, the LEMCs and the FFs and the vets involved because again the the louder the voice the louder the voice uh, the better but I totally agree this impact I'm right gonna here. your harness that you scrap your grants on. You're gonna harness, I'm going to harness him to the microphone. <laughs> to be like this. Is this any better, buddy? <laughs> That's it. Because every show, it's like, he, he starts off perfect. He starts off perfect. And then it's like, well, well, that's why I decided well, to sit next well. to him because he moves back enough they can see. <laughs> you know, but, uh, um, <coughs> everybody, a lot of different clubs, a lot of different riding groups have causes. Um, you know, w like one specific cause that they are, um, you know, supporting. Do you guys have a specific charity organization? Support work, we're probably pretty much everything. But we do go for um, autism. We stand up for soldiers, hunting with soldiers, um, you name it, we support it. Supporting it. Yes. Hey, just real quick, um, one of the ladies that we worked with uh, just popped on. I don't know if she's been listening. Muzzy, I, I just sent you a message. I hope that you, uh, you heard this. This is uh, to introduce you specifically. This these ladies here represent the different DFW um, um, leaders, chapters. the chapters uh, of of the leaders, which is an all woman uh, uh, riding club, and they have twenty seven thousand members around the world, all over the country. They have some in Albuquerque, if if you're not uh, already Vegas. aware of that, in Vegas, and they uh, they are they have uh, agreed to. Uh, come with us next year when we come out and come strong. Uh, we were just talking about this idea about how empowering it would be to have uh, a, a group of lady bikers, uh, uh, have Lorinda up front on her bike, uh, leading them actually in because she's from there and that's uh, her, her right to lead that ride, but have dozens of... Uh, Muzzy Ken, why don't you have a call in? We still got time in the show. You hey, call in. hey, Muzzy, yeah, if you want to call in, I'll give you the number real quick. It's 214-556-6239. We would love to um, uh, have you call in and, and talk to us about that. But we were just discussing uh, before I saw you pop up uh, about that visual, how that might be empowering. And if it was empowering to one person, uh, out there, one survivor, one uh, family member to, to know that these ladies from their respective positions around DFW were adding their voice to ours and we're, we're just adding more uh, soldiers to the battle, so to speak. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, yeah, what, um, what cause, what organization? So Denton will be supporting a carnival that will be held in October for autism with 29 acres. We're going to help earn money for 29 Acres. It's a facility that helps adult autistic uh, male and females who have kind of grown out of the system, and there's no longer help for them, but they still need to thrive in life. And right, so right. they let them either live there alone and teach yeah, them how – Yeah, beautiful. Teach them it's how 26, to – It's called 26 Acres? 29 Acres. 29, acre, 29 right. Acres. Unbelievable. Yes, and they teach these adults, depending on what their levels are, to either live – alone and be able to function as far as doing their own laundry and cooking for themselves mm -hmm. or those that need maybe a live-in assistant will live with them and help them they also teach them things like how to interview for jobs how to control their money and pay bills um, wow. it's a wonderful wonderful program adults can go and volunteer as well um, so we're going to be hold holding a carnival at the end of this year to help raise money for them it'll be family friendly it'll be october 26th and again, oh, the day we s set sail on a high seas rally. Yeah, oh, or we'd yeah. be there. But, or but be there. please encourage everybody but else to here. come I'm on. I'm not going on the cruise. Okay, this there year. you go. Well, but let me ask you. Bring a um, costume. You can if, enter a costume if contest. If you can't make it, is there a place you can donate? Yes, you can donate to 29 Acres. They're a 501c3, or you can get a hold of me, Nina Brown, at 623-252-8185, and I can help you with the link to that. All right, great. Because we'll put all that on our uh, our web page as well. Because this way, if you can't make it for some reason, you know, I donate five, ten dollars, whatever you can. Yes, and you know, every every dollar counts. You know, we we talk about this all the time. 
You know, people go, oh, I, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Well, give up the latte for that day, you know, and, and donate five bucks. Mm -hmm. And you, you contributed. You made a difference in someone's life. And you may not feel that it's an impactful uh, contribution, but you don't know how much five dollars can do. Mm -hmm. And everybody can afford five bucks. Exactly. So the Dallas leaders, um, you know, a lot of the leaders all across, and I know Fort Worth is a lot of things for the kids, um, a lot of things for the kids, especially during Christmas time. Um, but the Dallas leaders wanted to do something that kind of people forget about. Um, we do, obviously, we, we partner with One Tribe um, every November. We do a chili cook-off, um, and we support them, especially with, with um, unfortunately, with mental health issues yes. and suicide prevention. Unfortunately, I had a son-in-law who killed himself a few years ago. So we have mental health issues in our family, so it's a big, big... Um, uh, it, it's, Leaves it's, a hole in your it, heart. It, it does. Yep. And the last thing is that we're all about... Dallas oh. is really about animal rescue. So oh, we, yes. we, we support a Roddy rescue and we also support Cody's rescue. So those are the ones that we, that nice. we support. We're going to talk more about that in a second, but we got Muzzy on. We got Muzzy on. Hey Muzzy, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time, joining in and uh, being part of this. Want to introduce you to the uh, leaders um, who have so graciously said they're going to support this MMIW effort next year um, and come in strong. So, uh, ladies, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, the negotiator. We're going to have the negotiator be actually yeah. on this for our That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. She's so, she's, she's and she has the experience of having worked on a, on a, a we, we, reservation we before. We've nominated you. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Muzzy, yeah. Muzzy, this is the negotiator, so... Uh, you know, why don't you introduce you both? Yeah, to each I was going to say, Muzzy, I'm Nina Brown. They call me the negotiator. Uh, I started out in law enforcement with a tribe called Muckleshoot in Washington State. And so when I heard a little bit about what you guys did this year, it just kind of spurred me on to go, hey, that's something we need to take on and learn more about as well and participate in. So can you share with me what you would want or need from the Litas? Uh, let's see here. And this is as far as something for next year or is this something Correct. currently? This yeah. is for the ride uh, uh, next year, Muzzy. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Of course, the planning part of it. Um, I don't have anything right off the back right now, but I know that the, the riders did good, do a good job. <laughs> I, I know we caught you it's off just, guard on this one. I know we caught you off guard because be yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, they, they got the experience now on how it looks like things are gonna go. But uh, it kind of looked like you guys were pressed for time last time, and um, well, I would say as far as like support from the ladies, we need all the support we can get. <laughs> Yeah, Muzzy, you said that uh, what can you do, you know, we were talking about next year, but what can we do now and what can we do throughout the year to also help, to aid? Um, because we're, we're going to be bringing this up all the time. So how, how could they support you throughout the year? How could they um, raise awareness even here in the DFW area? How could they do that? Um, as far as raising awareness, what we usually do is we host events for local families, some that haven't been heard yet or some that haven't been supported or helped, depending on, uh, <clears throat> you know, something as simple as making flyers, um, putting together, you know, some, some like graphic art or like t-shirts and bandanas and things like that. Like, we do have people that do work on those things for us, but it's always to get another artist's perspective. You know, like um, say if you're, people are doing a memorial for somebody, they would want to do like a memorial t-shirt. Um, and then as far as like missing, it would be like a current picture of the person that's missing and then a little bit of their info. Okay. Um, and then there's things like, uh, I think the biggest one is legal the legal aspects of it as far as understanding um let's see we do have one attorney but 
she's been working pro bono and her plate is pretty full right now. Okay, so and just, I would say some kind of uh, legal representation, maybe just, work towards that. Just to try not just you know just for Navajo mm-hmm. Nation, but for you know also surrounding tribes. Does the tribe have um, tribal courts there on your reservation? Say it again. Does your tribe have a court system there on your reservation? We do have a court system, but it it's backed up because the, everything's not um, all the cases aren't separate. They're just all kind of intertwined with other things. Oh, okay. <laughs> We definitely, Along with other things. Yeah, let's definitely connect on that and talk some more off mm-hmm. air. I uh, have a few more questions about how your court systems work to see if we can try and help you with the legal aid part of it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's definitely do that because that's kind of where I come in and can help you guys knowing a little background on how the tribal courts work and then where are you guys yes. located so that when we do fundraising or if we find somebody who's phenomenal at graphic art or wants to donate t-shirts or um, something can we get that kind of information closest, yeah the closest town we got around here is farmington um the the little town that we live in is shiprock right now currently you know as far as like four corners goes Okay. A lot of the families do live in the Four Corners area, but we name uh, they mainly just say Shiprock because it's one of the major um, okay. hubs for Navajo Nation. Okay. So, so yeah. Muzzy, there's two two things I, I want to come up, comment on uh, really uh, quickly. You, you mentioned the graphic arts and and getting different perspectives. Just how effective that can be. I'll give you one quick example. When we were riding back the other day, mm-hmm. we're going through Texas, mm-hmm. uh, and we see this woman in a in a uh, uh, SUV uh, running down the road. And I happened to look over uh, on the on the back of her car, and she had uh, a, a facsimile of of the red hand, right? And it mm-hmm. wasn't the same as the ones that y'all had. It was different, but it had the same meaning. It had uh uh mmi uh, mmi wp i think something like that on there as i recall Mm -hmm. and i i tapped v on the knee and i said hey look look she's got the red hand on there and so we pulled up yeah and that's how we know and and then you know that's a good thing that's a good thing to see you know because when you go into certain spaces of the city or you're on the road and you see that red hand emblem right and it makes you feel like okay we're not alone Yep. We got other people out here that's doing the same thing we are. And that's basically what it's part of the awareness part of it because I don't charge people with the red hand that I make. I give it to people that I see physically doing the awareness, like you guys. You know, I'm like, okay, this is their last day. You know, like, what do you guys think? And, you know, we do want to hand it to someone that we know is going to be responsible for raising that awareness yep. on our behalf. So and that's all we want um, with the red hand. Then just to show people that it is a safe space, you know, that, that you're there, that you're representing, that you're in DSW and they know where you stand. And that's how it's been for us. We see someone with the red hand emblem and we wave to them or we do the unity fist in the air. You know, just to let each other know that we're all here in, in it together. I, I want to tell you one other thing. Um, there's um, a listener or someone who's watching us on social media right now called Vanjie Randall. And she goes, we need billboards mm-hmm. in our in our area. I don't know where she's at, but I got to tell you. This same is, place. Same Farmington, place? Kirtland oh. area. Okay. Uh, I shared this with Sideshow and, and V the other day. When I got home, went to bed that night, I had a dream. This is true. I had a dream. A vision came to me. Right, and I'm not going to mention the name of the company, and I'm not going to say exactly what they do, except to say that they go into neighborhoods and communities everywhere across the country once or twice a week. And I envisioned like a mobile billboard uh, on on the the type of service that they provide. And I got to thinking mm-hmm. how how effective because Sideshow and I uh, were talking about the the old milk carton. Um, 
uh, deal from the you know the 80s, 80s and early 90s where have you seen uh, this child or whatever but then you had to go in and you had to buy the carton of milk to get the information that was on the side of it and so I had this dream of this thing going through these neighborhoods uh, with a, a poster on it you know uh, uh, have you seen this person missing since such mm -hmm. and such where everybody sees it once or twice a week in every neighborhood or many, many, many across the, nation. Across the country. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we learned about, what'd you say, about 60%. The, the, the milk carton program, like with Adam Walsh and everything else, how that started back in the 80s, had a 62% success rate in its first few years. Um, it, died mm -hmm. off, it died off because uh, some people said it was exploiting the children and their families. Um, and that's wow. not something that we want to look for or, or do. Um, it's raising awareness, not ex, ex, you know, it's not exploiting anybody. But yeah, sixty-two percent. That's very simple. Rate. Fix. You yeah. would, if you were to do that, you know, like you said, a mobile billboard that would be awesome. Well, it's um, it's not exactly a billboard, but trust me, we we do it. Sideshow and I have this idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about it a lot and we're going to, uh, we're going to act on it and try to make it happen so that we could take MMIW awareness, literally be as promised, be that voice across the country. Mm -hmm. That's what our, our goal okay. is and we're working on it. Hey, Muzzy. Okay. This is and if you do share any information on any of these families or relatives, you got to get permission first. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. We, then, we, we, yeah, we, we can work together with that. Without a doubt, we wouldn't, so, we wouldn't, we wouldn't show any faces, names, or anything of anybody without uh, strict permission. Believe me. So, so Muzzy, real okay. quick, this is Cosmo. I'm one of the founders for for Dallas Lita's. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I uh, we actually have two women who are that I know of um, that are in Dallas that actually used to live out in New Mexico Albuquerque and in another area I'm sure once they hear about this they'll be happy to, to help in other ways as well but I also have a very good friend of mine that actually owns a, owns a very large towing company out in Albuquerque called SOS towing you know I, and they do a lot of the mail trucks as well over in Albuquerque um, you know, this could maybe do something we can put it on the side of their, their towing trucks. Again, yeah. there's a lot of different things that we can do. We're going to have Nina lead on this, but just let you know you have our support and um, and whatever we can do. And obviously, we're all about getting permission. We have to mm -hmm. uh, even we're local. We have to have permission from corporate to get things done. Too. Right. We so we we all understand that. I'll and you definitely know, donate some time with the graphic design. If you guys need T-shirts and stuff done, I can totally help with that. That would be awesome. You know, the, yeah. the one thing that uh, we, we, we did learn, and Muzzy, I think it was you or Gabriel that told me this, um, a lot of the websites are not legit That for MMIW. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they'll just be raising money that uh, and yep. donations that money does not go to the family or just a, a tiny portion. Can you share with yes. us the website that is a legit website? So nobody goes to those wrong ones? Okay. The main one we've been using here for Navajo Nation, I can't speak about other tribes, but the one for Navajo Nation we've been working closely with. Um, although we did have some hiccups with them, and, you know, we had to set some things straight with them also because uh, sometimes the focus does... Um, it, we try to keep it on the families, but you know, there's other entities. They forget the whole the whole reason, right? Of why you know they they exist. So uh, the nonprofit that we usually use is called MMDR. MM. Yeah, missing and murdered. The near relatives. Yeah, I'm missing murdered than Dene is spelled oh, oh, D-I-N-E. Gotcha. Okay, M-M, uh, Dene, right? Yeah, Dene relative. Dene That's relative. what we're going with now, but if anyone were to donate to that nonprofit to make sure um, to write a note attached to it to say, hey, this is going to the family of. So that way, when the nonprofit receives it, they're like, oh, yeah. This is where it's going. Gotcha. Because uh, right now we currently have Vanji. You mentioned her earlier. She's one of the advocates here in Farmington. And she's going to be 
leading the way for the May 5th, May 5th event here. Um, I wish she could get on, but I think she's at work. <laughs> uh -huh. She's probably watching now. Um, yeah, she's going to start up a nonprofit, and we're all there with her in support of it because it's going to be a nonprofit by the family, not through any other organization, entity, government, you know, state, and things like that because. Sometimes we have to jump through hoops just to get the funding. Hey, Muzzy, things. she's on. She's on here. Uh, she just popped up. Is she commenting? Yeah, she just commented. Um, listen, we're going to okay, have to. Okay, cool. She, she's listening. We're, we're going to have. I see Lorinda's on here as well. Lorinda, I sent, just sent you a message about these badass women over here to my right. Uh, all of them, <laughs> uh, including Pitbull, which yeah, didn't didn't meet, but they're uh they're all committing to uh, to get involved in this, and you know every every individual added to this is an extra voice uh, to the uh, to the cause to the mission, and uh, they're going to be involved next year uh, between now and next year. I, yeah. It kind of sounds like uh, when we come out there, and uh, um, we're going to as soon as we talk to them about the trip, what happened out there, and and our process, you know, not knowing anything but coming anyway, and what we've learned since they're on board with it so mm -hmm. it just gives me great and sideshow and pitbull great hope that uh next year's um uh second annual mm mmiw ride to raise awareness is going to be uh off the charts badass so mm -hmm. listen we're gonna have to let yep. you go muzzy because we're you. coming up on uh on uh, our time out of here but uh thank okay. you for calling in yeah, i know we'll it. have you back uh, on here again lorinda you too um and uh vanji we see you on there not today but we'll we'll catch you uh at another time as well uh because we're 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 not one and done that's not the way we roll here on the 99 we're going to uh make this a cause and we're going to make a difference with uh everybody's efforts that's right so thank you guys appreciate it and we'll see you soon we'll talk to you soon okay okay uh, <laughs> but you know um i know i know uh that seems like a long time away but this coming up may the fourth be with you mm -hmm. here at uh american eagle yep right so you want to show support you want to get empowered you want to meet some badass women you want to show them that you care about their causes and what they do all right on may 4th Head out to American Eagle. What are the times again? 11 to? It starts at 11 o'clock. Um, the band ends at 3, but we're probably going to keep going on to about 5 or 6. So. All right. And this is um, this is not a ride, right? This is just a gathering? or This is a gathering. The leaders have uh, our own separate ride. Each of us have, there's about 100 of us that are riding. Um, it's just the leaders members only that's riding um, from Denton, from Fort Worth, and from Dallas. And, and we're, we're all, all meeting. Here. We're, we're all, all coming, coming together. Um, we'll be all meeting in a location, and we'll all be riding in together at 11 o'clock. So you'll get to see the parade of 100 of, of leaders that's awesome. that's coming awesome. through um, through that. So don't be shy, ladies, if you're out there and you're, you know, maybe you're, you want to ride or you just got your license or, you know, you just want to go out there and meet some women, you know, get ready to kickstart your life. I'm telling you, you just need to dive head first into the world of Alitas. You can find all of us at theleaders.co, that's C-O. Um, and from there, you put your city in and you'll connect with either Fort Worth, Denton or Dallas. Um, and you can find us all on our Facebook pages as well. Just real simple, the leaders Dallas, the leaders Fort Worth, or the leaders Denton. We all have Instagram and Fort Worth. The, one, the one thing I, I didn't touch on before we wrap up is if there's ladies out there and say you want to be a part of the leaders, right? You're going to go there. What what are some of the processes you know that you, to to be part of the leaders group? Three things you need to identify <laughs> as a woman. <laughs> Number well, uh, two. I, well, there's a lot of people that identify as women that aren't women. Let, let's be real. We accept all women who identify as women. As okay. women. Okay. You have to have your own motorcycle. Okay. And you have to live in the area that the community that you're in. Now, and that you is it. And you have to have any, your own endorsement. Any motorcycle. An endorsement. Any motorcycle. Yeah. Doesn't matter what kind. If you Doesn't have matter. a Harley, if you have... As Honda, a Suzuki, doesn't matter. Two wheels, three wheels. Okay. Does not matter. All inclusive. All inclusive. Okay. 
and there's no prospecting. There's, there's no, no prospecting. There's no, no fees. There's no dues. We here's what's awesome too is that you're not required to do anything. We have women that have been part of our group for a year, and again, maybe they work, maybe they couldn't make it right, to one of our right, events. Right. Each one of our groups, that's why you want to go on to the social media, each one of our groups, we have one meet and greet every month, um, and we also have one um, ride every month. So Denton has one, Dallas has one, and wow. so does Fort Worth. Um, and a lot of times it's just a meetup, whether you ride or cage it, when I mean by cage it, drive your car. You know what I mean? Um, and you come sit around. And you have dinner, and you and you know it's it's you very network. low key. You, you we network. just network. You, you, you get to you get to and meet you get more comfortable. People. And after that, you then you like want to ride with us. So yeah. um, there's no requirement. Like I said, those are the only things that we require. And I'm going to tell you what you will find the most unbelievable group of women. And there's there's something for everyone. Well, if this and, is oh if this big <laughs> thing, big we news. Do, this big is thing. big news. We do not tolerate drama. We will <laughs> kick your ass out. <laughs> We well, do not I, I gotta tell you, yes. and, no and we are not clicky. If, if, you know, if the four of you here today shows even a piece of what the rest of the uh, leaders are, man, it's an amazing group because you have been all amazing. Thank you. You, you, you know, um, you come from great backgrounds. Can't wait to ride with you. Can't wait to get out there and see you guys out there. Uh, we're gonna try to get out there uh, um, on the fourth and um, maybe cover some of it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try yeah. to get out there and uh, be part of it and support you as well. And, um, man, this has been great. Mm -hmm. This is, was all about the ladies. All about, all the, about ladies. the ladies. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. That's who you want to contact, obviously. Oh, okay, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, any, any wrap-up statements? Anybody? I think Thanks this is fantastic. Thanks for having us. And the one thing that leaders do say is we say raise hell. So <laughs> raise hell, babes. So let's raise hell for MMIW awareness. And it, you man. can help these ladies out there. And I can't use the word like ass anymore because my, mom, my, mom my, so my, my mama's he yelling, yelling at me right now. She says, don't use that word. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so yes, much mom. for having us. But yeah. oh, thank you guys really for you. coming. And, you know, we always say. People come into each other's lives and stuff for a reason. Like we came into the lives of those folks out there at Navajo Nation, and and you guys have come here, and I I think this is going to be the start for them of a really good um, relationship where where empowered women can make a difference, helping other women that um, fight this battle. I don't want to say alone because they're not, but their their battle is really tough logistically. Uh, their resources are not what they could be, and you guys, maybe you guys are the game changer. Right. Maybe. And you, uh, you want to learn more about the leaders? You can you can follow uh, them on their Facebook page, or you get any information that we're going to be posting everything on to uh, the 99% Radio Network Facebook page. Um, I know you have the the May 4th ride. You had something else too coming up. October. Right. The October, our right? Our chili cook-off. We also have yeah. um, Autism Carnival. Yeah. Yeah. Um, May 26th. Yep. Right. Sorry, October 26th. Right. So uh, if you can give me all that, I, I will post all those onto uh, the page as well to help support. And, um, man, just be part of uh, something that's bigger than yourself. That's what we always want to try to say. Rising tide lifts all boats, and that's what the 99 is all about. We want to lift everybody up and um, just – just be human again and just be kind. And if you could be anything in this world. Be kind. So we were oh, on our phone. Hold on. He's, he was wrong. <laughs> we're going to try that one more time. Okay. Let me try that one more <laughs> So if you could be anything in this world. Be, be kind. kind. Be kind. Peace till next week. <laughs>